Hello. Hello. My name is Odie Hawkins. And once again, uh, I'd like to talk to you about a number of books that I've written. Uh, I am currently on a worldwide tour with my lovely wife, Zola Selena, who is videotaping this. The world tour is taking place right here in this room, <laughs> but uh, we are going all over the world. And with the books, we'll be going all over the world too. I want to start with one that was written in 2007. Uh, here's the back story. I've been a science fiction fan for a long time and uh, uh, I was prompted by circumstances to write a book about some astronauts who were off on a long duration space mission. Uh, as you all know, as most of you remember, when uh, the Russian astronaut Gagarin was uh, sent off for a year and returned, uh, the question that was asked of him is, what did you miss most? And he said, sex. Uh, huh. That's trick of cord and not of heads. I thought about it for a while, and uh, with the with Zola's encouragement, I decided to write a book about seven astronauts who are accompanied on a long duration space mission by a I don't want to say a woman, not not a comfort woman, but a facsimile of all the females that either one of these astronauts would like to have accompany him on a long duration mission into space. So it's not uh, uh, an overheated uh, sex novel about some guys up in space just simply going in out of a room with a woman. In this case the woman uh, happens to be in some cases a psychologist, a mother figure, in the same way that you go to the to the upscale hotel and put in your little uh, your little uh, card to get the door open, this is what they do when they go to this special place designed in the spaceship. Uh, the like, story has a very interesting kind of ending because is she like a hologram? Is she like a hologram but solid? Exactly that. Okay. I, I couldn't think of it for a minute. Mm -hmm. Exactly that. Mm -hmm. Because of political uh, circumstances at the time that the mission ends and they are being brought back to Earth, they cannot bring this figure, I'm calling her Lady Bliss, mm -hmm. they cannot return to Earth with Lady Bliss because of the political circumstances and the, the fake hypocritical moral attitudes of uh, some of us here on Earth. So they're forced to release her into space and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stretch because we know you might not last longer than a second or two in space without oxygen so on and so on. But she managed to uh, find herself in one of these uh, one of these thermal waves that take her to a, 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 an idealistic planet that I'm calling what is the place called? Let's call it an ideal place. Okay. It's a planet. As a matter of fact, I'm hesitating to, to, to reveal the name because I don't want people buying tickets and spoiling in the place. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Right. Something like Z. Well, okay. 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 Uh -huh. There we go. And uh, since they already have someone like Lady Bliss on this planet, they, they welcome her as, as a sister figure. And uh, in a, in a, once again, in a, in a kind of stretch, they wind up with two it beings. The it being is a, a mythical creature who comes from some, somewhere out there who may have lived on this planet in uh, previous centuries 
who has returned. Okay. That's what happened. That brings it to the end. Zola, the feminist, said to me, said, hey, look, wait a minute, wait a minute. At some point, they're going to have uh, female astronauts. What happens with them? What happens to them when they go into space and, and they spend, you know, years without any uh, male company? Uh, one of the things that happens as a result of them being chosen for the mission is that they exclude uh, people who might be in love with people of the same sex. That's still how backward they are, but that's another story. So I designed a character whose name is Mr. Bonobo Bliss. Mr. Bonobo Bliss accompanies seven female astronauts. They call themselves astronauts. And Mr. Bonobo Bliss is someone who uh, takes care of the seven women aboard, each in the way that they need to be taken care of, and uh, <laughs> manages to escape into the world at large after a while. He has certain kinds of uh, deficiencies. First of all, he has to be lubricated fairly often. Otherwise, oh, you want to see this? Yeah. This is the spaceship rocket. <laughs> okay, it's sort of a Matisse type painting. Uh huh. Mr. Bonneville. Mr. Bonneville, please. Uh huh. Uh, I'm sure that there's some. I people... see we've sold out of Lady Bliss's company. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm sure there's some people who will recognize kind of a little piece of bit of fun that I'm poking. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the Bonobo monkey mm -hmm. is a, a, a primate who has determined that the best way to solve all of their problems, they're not like chimpanzees who go around raging in, mm -hmm. in the jungle to find out who's the baddest monkey and so forth. They resolve most of their social issues by making love. They call mm -hmm. them the love monkeys. Uh, uh, the evidence shows that they take it every which way you can think of it. Mothers and sons and fathers and daughters and mothers and... Uh, anyway, it's just mind-boggling. Very complicated. But they don't, they don't have the same kind of relationship with each other that we have here. Okay, that's an out-of-space adventure. Uh, I was sort of needle into this in addition to what uh, Zola laid on me, by uh, some of the uh, space novels I've read over the years, Robert Heinlein and uh, Octavia Butler and people like that, I thought, you know, I'd like to write something about what's going to happen in space in the coming years. So that's that. I want to bring Zola Selina aboard now to accompany me in a discussion of another book. This one has a background that's a little bit more earthbound. I call it Chuckles Across that. Welcome to the Why hello oh, yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm fine. Okay. How about yourself? Uh, we are welcoming you. Oh, yes, I see. Yes. Hi. <laughs> uh, we'll introduce the, invi the invisible ancestral guest mm -hmm. in a moment who will be accompanying this. Mm -hmm. uh, Shackles Across Time. Mm -hmm. Zola Selina, the photographer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Shackles Across Also is responsible for the, the cover, mm -hmm. the artwork. Mm -hmm. The idea came to me. Uh, I, I'm talking about, in a way, how writers get their ideas about things, many, many, many different ways. This one, this one came to me under the influence of malaria oh. in Ghana, okay. uh, where we were, I was there in 1992 for, until three years, 
And then we went back in 2013 and 2014. 2014 yeah. Okay. Uh, I wanted to show Zola where I had malaria. Anyway, <laughs> under the influence of the sure. malaria, which is the only way I can put this, I started thinking about that's a great cover. I think showing you. all of the the colonial powers and the once. time and the chains that really encompass Africa. That's still, that's still, yeah. It still shackles Africa. All all mm -hmm. of us know that. If it's not the World Bank, it's the IMF and it's the same thing. Uh, for those who've been following events, you know that uh, the Chinese have a big, big investment in, in Ghana. Yeah. Anyway, the story is uh, about the about the uh, involvement of Africans in the African slave trade, mm -hmm. the African slave business, and uh, what effect that had on Africa and uh, the effect this had on African Americans. I would like to maintain, and people, a lot of people don't like to hear it. But there is something I do believe that might be called post-traumatic stress, slave disorder. So. Yeah, that's very possible, I think. Talk to me a little bit about the cover. You, uh... Okay, well, when you were talking about the development of the book, you know, you talked about all the countries, Britain, um, Lebanon, whatever, all the countries that are involved in, in Africa. And so I like you say, you say president are involved are involved you know or have always the Danish so forth and so I picked up the flags okay to show the various areas where they uh, are entrenched and I did a fa grandfather's clock so that uh, it's just throughout time and for the tick tock I have a heart because it's taking the heart out of Africa, tick tock, tick tock. So many people that uh, don't really know or don't even care what they're doing to the people or the culture. And um, at least that's my opinion. Huh. And also the facts of the different chains that were used in slavery. So that Neck chains and brace, brace uh, chains and, and, you know, stars and different type of things that, you know, knuckle things that were uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, why I decided to do You know what struck me uh, with the chains and things that, mm -hmm. that you talk about? Uh, I had a, a, a friend of mine who was a sculptor mm -hmm. named Dale, and he was talking about what big business the Europeans had in iron works during the whole slave era, the, mm -hmm. the 250 years or the 400 years, uh, so that they they made millions not just simply off of enslaved bodies, mm -hmm. but making the chains and the, the necks, mm -hmm. bracelets, and the this and that, this and that. Mm -hmm. uh, something else. The book. The book will interest those who are interested in uh, African mysticism. Uh, I call it the first of a series of books that I'm writing that deal with the African occult. I'm not talking about uh, the Yoruba religion. I'm not talking about uh, Voodoo or Obeya or Candomblé or Macumba or Shango. I'm talking about <clears throat> I'm talking about a certain kind of uh, spirituality that has accompanied people of African descent, no matter where we've been sent, or we've been taken, or where we go. Uh, I remember, as a small illustration of it, walking down uh, the main street in Amsterdam one morning, and there were some little children, African children, from uh, Dutch Guinea, mm -hmm. and they were so African, and they were speaking Dutch, <laughs> and it just, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, but you know, it's like we see people 
all the time. A friend of mine who spoke fluent Croatian, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, you know, we uh, we come out into the world in very different ways and presented the world a special kind of thing that I'm calling the occult, and it doesn't mean spooky. It doesn't mean zombies and werewolves and Frankenstein and uh, Bela Lugosi and all of that. It's a deeper thing than that, which brings us to this uh, chair we have between us mm -hmm. that is accompanied by, well, your mother? Queen Jewel. Uh, mm -hmm. give, it, give it to her. This Queen is, Jewel. This is one of the artifacts that mother gave us. And uh, it's a wonderful African chair that, you know, one could uh, take a seat on. If one it's a strong chair. It's a strong, strong chair to sit back. And so, you know, uh, it is a comfortable chair. Okay, uh, sort of a lean back though. Now you see the artwork, the fish. Frog. I think this is a whole piece that was called. Yeah, it's a whole piece. And, uh, you know, we're not trying to dust it too much or whatever because we like to kind of find out where it's from. And sometimes the dust or whatever, the dirt off the artifacts can tell you. If you look closely, you'll see certain legends. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a frog. The frog, the, the fish. fish mm -hmm. That might indicate that this uh, a Yemaya. Mm -hmm. Think it has something to do with that. It's in two uh, pieces. There's this one whole piece that's the back, and, and then, then this the spoon part. Yeah, it's, it's like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful piece, and. Uh, Definitely thank Queen Jewel. That was so thoughtful. That mm -hmm. was so thoughtful of her. Mm -hmm. You know, with the shackles across time, the the um, summary. You know, well, really, would you? I have my glasses. Would you but yours are already on. No, Why don't you, you leave? Please, please, please. <laughs> As the author. Uh, shackles across time by yours truly, mm -hmm. Odie Hawkins. Hawkins. Shackles across time traces the history of a curse of a spiritual fatwa, in a sense, on an African slave trader's family in West Africa. An African slave trader's family in West Africa. And the subsequent effect of that curse on the family over the course of three centuries. Modern technology helps the descendants to realize that something is not cool with their spiritual DNA but they must use old-fashioned means to cope with the problem. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They engage the services of a well-known writer, a case of serendipity. He has written about their family in his book about the transatlantic slave trade. The mediator is called an Ochami. The Ochami meets with the descendants of the man who pronounced the curse, and unfortunately, must undergo the spiritual cleansing necessary for him to be taken seriously. His life has changed by his ordeal. It is also instrumental in having the curse lifted from the African slave trader's descendants. So it, it ends on a, an upbeat note. I like, you know, I like the fact in the book that every, was it every third child or? Every third child. Every third child had a Some psychological affliction. or physical yeah. You know, and, you know, you would think the family, after a certain amount of time, if every third child, okay, you got the first and the second, okay, the third child is going to have a problem. You would think that they would try to investigate. But they, they, uh, they didn't, they didn't connect the dots okay. for quite a while because the family was, some, was separated. When the slave traders' uh, descendants, when the person who... But the curse? Okay, who, who, who cursed these people, when they went out, they were taken to different places, Cuba, Brazil. Okay. You know, it's one of the things that has happened to us uh, that has in some ways disabled us because we were not able until recently to make the connection between a certain place. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go to get our DNA ancestry thing, mm -hmm. they will be able to determine that your people came from this particular, the Ga people in Ghana or, or the, the Fulani people in Mali or 
mm-hmm. wherever. I'm suggesting West Coast rather than East Coast. Mm-hmm. But uh, from wherever it is we came from, just a little swab and you'll get to know. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it will validate chapters across time. I think it will. Uh, On that note. I think we should uh, go. Okay, also I want to thank you so much because I'm a science fiction fan and I, I love science fiction. So I thank you so much for writing Lady Bliss and Mr. Bonneville Bliss. Okay. I had no choice but the second one after I did the first one because you insisted that I do that. Uh, and know. of course, since I'm totally obedient to my wife's demands. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that with that. Uh, my request. Not my request, request, I like that. All right, so you. we did it. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, till next time. Thank you. I, I don't know what to say other than this world tour that we are on mm-hmm. will last for the next 27 days. Okay. Uh, we will be, we've missed one day, mm-hmm. but that's because I think we missed a connection in Bangkok or was it Thailand? I mean, uh, Bangkok or, or Italy. You are the writer. <laughs> you are the You're writer. so dear. You're so dear. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that's it for the moment. The title of the book, of the books, Barnabo Bliss. You can buy these books uh, at uh, Amazon.com or from your local bookstore. Just uh, Google Odie Hawkins. Mm-hmm. Or you go to your bookstore and say, I would like a book by Odie Hawkins, and they'll bring all the books up, and you can decide which ones you want. <laughs> And check out the synopsis. And thank you very much for joining us. Oh, wait a minute. You know what I'd like to do? I, you said that? you asked me to do the synopsis. Oh, okay. For... Okay. Mm-hmm. This is Bonobo Bliss. Mm-hmm. Mr. Bonobo Bliss is a humanoid mm-hmm. designed by the Dr. Maxwell Waters Group to accompany six female astronauts on a long duration mission. Mm-hmm. Beale's presence must be kept a secret because of the socio-political climate of the time. Unfortunately for the astronauts, the secret is leaked and their mission is scrubbed. They return to Earth with serious cases of post-traumatic romantic stress disorders. Mr. Bonobo Bliss escapes the Amazon forest and Dr. Maxwell Waters and her husband, the former head of the National Association for the Protection of Astronauts, are forced into exile. They resurface as the pioneers of the Antigua space program, the brainchild of the Antigua Minister of Tourism who wants to boost the tourism trade. Okay, and on Lady Bliss, it says the seven astronauts who are about to embark on a long-duration mission, LDM, (laughs) have decided that they would like to have a female companionship, to have female companionship. Lady Bliss, designed by the mad scientist Dr. Everready, is cautiously welcomed by Love the astronauts. Name, Everready. Fast Everready. forwarding back. Okay. And that's it. Okay, we'll be back. And uh, hopefully, uh, you'll be back with us. Ashe.